Welcome to this tech tip provided by Imaginic Technologies. My name is Rusty Belcher and I'll be working through this custom inventor part template tech tip with you today. If you create the same type of parts numerous times each day and those parts have different file names for every instance, you can save yourself quite a bit of time by using custom part templates with Inventor. Why start from scratch each time you want to begin a part? You can have the majority of the work accomplished and saved in a custom part template. This will allow you to start a new component, fill in the missing information, and save the design anywhere you wish. In this presentation today, we'll outline the process of creating a custom inventor part template and discuss several options for including additional functionality. Let me quickly show you what I'm talking about. I have my inventor application open and I want to create a gusset. I'm going to start File New and I'm going to go to my template directory. And you can see I have quite a number of extra folders in my template directory. I'm going to go to my Common Parts area and I'm going to select my gusset custom part template. This is a template where I have 80% of the work already done. I'm going to open the component and as you can see I have the sketch already ready for me to make my modifications. I simply want to modify my dimensions to suit the needs. And then update the part. Now all I have to do is simply go over and take the visibility off of my controlling sketches and I'm finished with my design. Now every time I discuss this topic I have a common question. Isn't my inventor library where I'm supposed to save my common parts? Well library components are a little bit different than custom part templates. Components stored in an inventor library have several common characteristics. They're models used in several designs, they're models with a finite number of variations. They have a predefined file name and storage location. And the model is a finished design, and the likelihood of change is extremely low. Things like motors, fasteners, and bearings are perfect candidates for your inventor library. Custom part templates are models that you use numerous times every day. They have an infinite number of variations. They do not have a predefined file name or a storage location. And they're models with a variable design. And that means that the likelihood of change is extremely high. Examples are things like structural members, T-bars, square tubings, and gussets like I showed you earlier. Or stock material like a 2x4 or a 4x8 sheet of plywood. Any part you use on a regular basis is a great candidate for a custom part template. From simple parts like the gusset I showed you earlier to a complex part like this ladder and safety cage, they're great candidates to be developed from a custom part template. If you work with wooden parts, you can set up a custom part template containing a 4x8 sheet of plywood. This allows you to lay out and cut your plywood components directly from a stock sheet, just like the builders in the field will have to do. Creating a custom part template is fairly simple. We create the desired model using our standard inventor processes, and we model the component to a point where the major changes can easily be made. In the gusset example I have here, I've modeled the gusset using standard inventor processes, and I left the sketches visible so I can easily change the design. To save it as a part template, I'm going to go to the application icon, and under Save As, you'll find a command, Save Copy as Template. This takes me directly to my template directory where I can create my own folder structure for my common part templates. I simply create the necessary folder and name it anything I want. Now I want to talk about numerous ways that you can enhance your custom part templates. And the first tip I want to give you is to build in adaptivity. Here I have three electrical panels and I need to create a pedestal for them to sit on. To do this, I'm going to utilize one of my custom part templates. Now, I already have this, or I've already started this particular process, so I'm going to delete the one I just dropped in, and I'm going to focus on the one I've already begun placing. As I said before, I built in adaptivity to this custom part template. So in the browser, I can right click and select adaptive. And that means it stretches to suit the situation I place it in. We use constraints to stretch adaptive parts. So I could come in and easily set up a flush constraint between the pedestal 
and the boxes and resize it to suit. So you can see that quickly and easily we've taken a simple design from a custom part template, added a couple of constraints, and we now have our finished part. The next enhancement we're going to focus on is visible sketches. I need to add a gusset to this design. So I'm going to go to my common parts area and start the part from my gusset part template. I'll drop it off to the side and here you can see that I left the sketches visible so that I can easily access the controlling dimensions for this design. I simply click the update button to update the component and then I turn off the necessary sketches. Now I want to talk about placing our assets. I also built in iMates to this particular asset and that makes placing it very, very easily. Holding the Alt button down and dragging an iMate allows me to constrain it into place very easily. Another thing you can do is build in a control point on your custom part template. I'm going to put a piece of handrail on this deck. And to do that, I'm going to go in and start my handrail common part template. I'll drop it off to the side and I'll click return. Let's go ahead and constrain it first. I'm simply going to constrain it to where it sits up on the deck and I'll click OK. Now I'm going to double click this component to make the modification. I left a visible sketch on my very first sketch. There's a control point and I can simply drag that control point to a desired destination and then click the update button. The parameters and the geometric constraints that are built into this design automatically will update the handrail to suit our current situation. Another major benefit of utilizing custom part templates is that you can build in your standard sizes and material types. For this example, I'm going to use my wood category and I'm going to start an assembly with a single sheet of plywood. We need to remember that plywood comes in 4 by 8 sheets and if we expect the people in the field to use 4 by 8 sheets of plywood, we need to design with 4 by 8 sheets of plywood. Another thing you can do to enhance your part templates is to include eye logic. I'm going to add a board to my design. This particular component has eye logic built into it, and I'm immediately presented with the option to choose the size of board I want. In this case, I want a 2x6 uh, piece of wood. I want it 4 feet long. I want it to be made of birch. And I select Done. I have the desired component I'm looking for. Now all I have to do is add some simple constraints to our design to finish it. So in conclusion, many of us work with parts similar to those shown in the presentation today. And you can't afford to start from scratch each time you need another component. The ability to utilize custom part templates allows us to reduce our model time because 80 to 90 percent of the work has already been accomplished. We can also enhance our workflows by utilizing templates with our standard processes and sizes already built in.